You're listening to realagriculture.com. Get real or get connected. With some early harvest by the Great White Combine and a relatively forgiving fall, many cattle producers are extending the grazing season with annual crop regrowth. And it's no wonder, every day that we extend the grazing season is one less day of costly winter feeding. But grazing regrowth can come with some consequences. Joining us today to talk about fall grazing and mitigating the risk of some of those consequences is Barry Uremcio, Beef and Forage Specialist with the Ag Info Center. Hello again, Barry. Hi, Deborah. Good chatting with you. Always is. So I want to talk to you about a few different crops today, but let's start with an oddball. It's not every year that you see cattle grazing canola, but some latent non-uniform emergence has meant harvesting canola as a forage this year. What should producers know about feeding canola and other brassicas to ruminants? Brassicas can be an excellent quality feed. Uh, Cattle do like the taste Uh, or I should say cattle like the feed itself because they do eat it. Uh, Quality at the full bloom to early pod stage can be 16, 17% protein, 62 to 65% TDN. So you can treat it as a high quality first cut alfalfa grass hay. Is there anything um, that we have to worry about when we're feeding it? It is a monoculture after all. Canola and the brassicas are plants that do accumulate sulfur. It's something that you need to watch out for. If sulfur levels get above 0.4% in the total ration, uh, cattle can experience polio. And there have been a few uh, situations in the last week where I've been receiving calls with that concern. The other thing is if the crop was heavily fertilized, Uh, and poor germination, poor growth, and it's the first real growth that they're harvesting now, uh, there is a chance of nitrate accumulation as well. Okay, so basically if we've already harvested some of the canola, then maybe it would use up some of that fertilizer, and the second growth would be a little bit better off? It it helps. There's Mm -hmm. no question about that. But the only way to be sure is to send a sample away and and get it tested. Uh, The regular analysis, along with sulfur, along with uh, nitrates, if the plant has potted out or if the growth has matured uh, fairly far along, say 30 to 40 days after the start of flowering, there could be oil in the seed, and if there's oil exceeding 7% in the ration, rumen function is impaired and you can get an artificial impaction problem. Okay, so should we be mixing in different feeds as well? If you can mix in feeds, uh, the, these regrowths on, on brassicas uh, tend to be fairly low in fiber. So there's always uh, the need to have some slough hay, uh, mature hay between the trees. Uh, if there's nothing available, take a couple bale feeders out there, put put some straw or uh, poor quality hay into the feeders just to give them something alternate uh, or some alternate feed source for them to, to chew on. They may only take two, three, four pounds a day, but that will help maintain healthy rumen function. Okay, and is there anything that we can watch for uh, that basically precedes polio or nitrate toxicity in symptoms of, in our cattle? Really, the only, the first symptom that you typically find uh, with polio, you, the animals might be disoriented, their heads might be tilted to the side. Uh, if they're walking, it looks like they're drunk. Uh, but generally, the first symptom both for polio and for nitrate poisoning is a dead animal, unfortunately. Okay, so get your feed tested. We always come back to that, get your feed tested. Absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, so... We've also we're also seeing a lot of people putting uh, their animals into the regrowth of cereal crops, uh, and I want to talk to you about frost as well. But is there um, other things that we should be watching for in terms of quality when we're putting animals out into this cereal regrowth? Cereal regrowth that is at the heading to the uh, flowering milk stage, excellent quality feed, low fiber again. So the same considerations as the canola if you don't have any alternate source of dry uh, hard grass or older grass you're going to need to put something in there 
the cereal crops are typically fertilized at a lower level than what you have for canola as far as nitrogen goes. So if you've got a good cereal silage crop or a green feed crop cut the first time uh, with good regrowth, the risk is a bit less than what you'd get with canola, but still, to have it tested, be sure you don't run into a problem. Okay, and and there is the possibility of having nitrates accumulate if we receive a frost, is that correct? Very true. Now, this one is the question that typically people uh, have the ideas backwards. The concern most people think is if they get a heavy frost or a killing frost, that's when the nitrates accumulate. And that is not true. If you have a killing frost, all the tissues in the stems have been completely destroyed, so there's no way for the plants to move nutrients up or down, so you don't get nitrate accumulation. It's the light frost, minus one, minus two, where the plant is injured. The leaves try to cannot convert the nitrogen as quickly into f- protein as they did before the, before the light frost, but the roots are still pushing up the nutrients in the water as fast as it can. So that's why you get nitrate accumulation and, and peak levels about four to five days after a light frost. Okay, so what's a killing frost then? Minus five, minus six for three to four hours. Okay, and that's across most of the cereals that we grow in Canada? That is, that is correct. Corn will take a little bit more frost uh, but that's a different, you know, that's typically a different story altogether. Okay. Um, and, and so then if we do see that light frost and we still want to graze, how long do we have to wait until we can? If, if the weather recovers and you get some reasonable growing season after the light frost, it's going to take 10 to 14 days for the plants to totally recover and nitrate levels to go back to normal. Okay, but we're not really seeing that nice growing any happening anymore. So what what about now? You know, being the uh, 5th of November, growing season is done. We've basically had a killing frost throughout all of Western Canada already. So whatever you've got in the plant, that's where it's going to stay. It won't change. Okay, good. Um, all right, and then I guess we can move over into the perennial crops. Uh, sh- can we be grazing our alfalfas right about now? There is no harm grazing the alfalfas or perennial forages now. The plants are dormant. Uh, you're not going to trigger regrowth on the plant to b- deplete food reserves. So it's safe to graze at very minimal risk of bloat because it is a frozen plant. The levels of soluble sugars are down, so risk is much less now than in, say, the middle of August, first part of September. Sure, and we won't be injuring the plant too much because it's already ready for winter. Correct. Okay. The one thing, the one thing you don't want to do is, I know it's going to be tempting this year, you see some forage out there and you've got some regrowth and you want to graze it to save some some bales of hay, but you want to leave three to four inches of of stubble on the field so that it can trap the snow to have moisture melt and be available to the plants first thing in the spring. So if you overgraze now, you're going to lose productivity next year. But what about nitrate accumulation? Is that a problem in legumes? Legumes are a different creature completely from the annual crops. You've got nodules in the root system that hoards nitrogen and only releases what is needed by the plant on a daily basis. So the risk of having nitrate accumulation in alfalfa, clovers, vetches, peas, sanfoin is virtually zero. I've only seen two cases in my career, which has spanned 30 years, where nitrates in alfalfa has been a problem. And in both cases, the people had applied someplace between 8,000 and 10,000 gallons of liquid pig manure after the first cut. In the cases of whatever we're grazing, uh, we can take a a sample of that feed. How how do we do that when it's the regrowth of cereals or canola? With the regrowth of cereals and canola, uh, just take a pocket knife out there uh, cut the plants off about f- four inches above the ground. Uh, go to 10, 12 different places across the field. Take uh, five, six stems off of each location. Compile the sample and then send it away. 